so here we have the back wall of the enclosure. Uh, we went ahead and measured out our vents where we want them so they match up and they're even. We're going in uh, six inches from each side, four inches down. Uh, they're all marked out. Where I want to go ahead, I'm going to drill a hole in each one and then I can go ahead and use my jigsaw to go ahead and cut cut this out and I will cut about a half inch inside of the line because the, the line is drawn to the outside diameter of my vents. So I'll just leave it about a, give it about a half inch and cut these out all the way around. Okay, so all we've done here is we've taken, here's our floor and we've propped up our two sides and our back wall that we put the vents in and all I did is I went ahead and put a just put a tack a couple screws in each corner to hold it in place after after we used our square on the I like to use this one on the outside and this one on the inside so you can really make sure you get a good square on your corners and then and then so yeah I just go ahead and added a few screws to hold it together and now we're just gonna pre-drill it I'll Okay, since uh, we had a little weather outside, so we kind of moved the project inside here. Um, so all we've done since the last filming is we added the little dirt dam here wall, which was just a little six inch wall. We screwed in from the bottom and from the sides um, because it's going to be bioactive. Um, we want to have space for enough dirt. And then I went ahead and, and put a healthy uh, seal of, col of silicone around all the, co all the way around the corners. A little bit up the sides, but mostly down the last six inches is really thick uh, of silicone. Um, we're gonna, you know, we love our bugs, we love our dirt and, and plants and stuff. And so uh, we wanna make sure we don't have anything leaking out. I want real heavy on the screws on anything like really like every inch and a half, two inches, anything um, that is gonna be below the dirt line just to make sure we had a real tight seal. Above here, there may be every three or four inches, the screws, um, just probably overkill, but we went, we used over a hundred screws per cage. Um, so yeah, overkill probably. Um, so anyway, so that's all we've done since the last filming and I've gone ahead and, and measured out some things um, this is actually going to be a, a stack of four cages and so we have a, a hot side and a cool side and the whole we're really trying to build these things so they have a lot of temperature gradients excuse me and so um, on the stack we, we made you know alternating the light on one side on one cage and the next one will be the light on the other side so they're not all hot on one side all hot on the other and so uh, what I found um, with our, through our experience with these bioactive cages and dirt and especially big animals and we're going to have boas and water cobras in these cages that, that move a lot of dirt and mess around and stuff, it's great uh, to have the water bowl elevated so you just, it saves you so many problems. So I've made these little, these little braces to kind of hold the water up and we're going to have dirt to here so they'll have a cool spot where they can hide underneath the bowl and also they won't be dragging dirt into into the bowl constantly filling it with dirt and whatnot and we'll be able to lift it out easily change it i've, I've just used some scraps to make some little braces we put this here that there and then this little contraption here that i made um, since we're stacking the cages um, it's super light, but the stuff does bow. So I went ahead and I've, I made this little kind of T support to put in the front, which keeps the, you know, the, the roof can set on that and really supports the whole thing. Since I'm stacking four of these cages that are going to have dirt, um, and, and some weight to them. So we want to have some support. Um, I, th I feel like that was enough, but since I was doing this water bowl thing, I went ahead and made it extend all the way to the ceiling. So now we have dual supports for each cage and, and it'll alternate. The next cage, it will be on this side. So you'll see when it all comes together. Um, 
but kind of a cool little uh, little configuration. I figure it will make uh, it'll give them a lot of temperature gradients. They can get up here right next to the light on the basking side. They can get over here cool in the water on the cool side, or really get underneath the water if they really want to cool down. And uh, we had some extra material, so kind of went crazy. And on our warm side, I went ahead and just you know cut a 45 and uh, made some little shelves with a support so we can add this to our warm side. Our light will be right here in the middle or so, so they can get up close. Um, again, giving them a temperature gradient. Uh, so kind of cool and we're gonna have, you know, there'll be dirt up to here or so. Um, very simple, I just went ahead and Mark leveled them and marked them off. Put a couple screws from the outside. They have the support here. Three screw screws. Boom. We've drastically increased our, our surface area of this enclosure. Just now. And our temperature gradients. They're gonna be there's gonna be quite a difference from our temperature up here, our temperature underneath there, and even more so over there on the water bowl and underneath. Um, the very bottom cage is going to have the boas in it, which like a like a warmer temperature, and it's going to be a you know it's the only one with really live plants. Uh, the cobras will just destroy them, and so I went ahead and put two lights in that cage, um, and we'll see uh, as these we set them up and how the temperatures go. We know as you stack them, the top the higher one you go up, the warmer they're going to be. Uh, so I don't think we're going to need two lights in the in the top closures for the Cobras, but we'll see. So I only set them up for one at this point. Um, I went ahead and we got these two back vents, but they're going to be somewhat, there's a, a gap in between, but they're sort of up against the wall. So I went ahead and added a little two inch vent to only, I'm only doing it out of the cool side of each enclosure um, to, again, create a little gradient um, so we'll see if that's enough maybe we'll end up adding another one to the other side I kind of doubt it but uh, okay so that's where we are I'm gonna go ahead and basically uh, these are marked off I'm gonna this is gonna be our water bowl so they're all gonna have great big water basins to lay in um, so all I'm gonna do is go ahead and screw this into place which is gonna actually go this way and that's going to support our water bowl. I'm going to take this level, hold it up to these, and on our mark, and go ahead and screw these little pieces of scrap to support the other sides of the water bowl. Very simple, very easy to pick up and remove or slide out the end. And then this is already marked off the holes where I'm just going to go ahead and set this in here three screws, boom, 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 and this is solid as can be in there, and uh, looking good. Then, and then after that, here we have our window tracking, uh, just, uh, just a slide track from Home Depot. You can see one side is deeper than the other side. Um, the, the tall side goes on the top. I'll mount that right to the bottom of the, of the roof. And then the short side, I will mount to the bottom of this and then you measure the distance between the top and the bottom and you deduct 7 16 of an inch and that will be the size of your glass. Um, so because of the extra size in the top you can put it in. What I did was once I created the first enclosure I made a cardboard template so I, you could make sure trimmed it off a little bit and got the size, made sure of the size that popped in there, fit in and still slid without falling out. And then uh, had my glass cutter cut those. It was 15 bucks a panel. So I'm in, I think 125 bucks for the four cages for the glass. Um, so a uh, great system. Um, the, the, the trick was in these I, is the right screws. Um, you, you want your glass to slide smoothly. And uh, that was a bit of an issue. It's too narrow of a channel to really get a good countersink in. And then uh, a drill bit tip just wasn't quite doing enough. Uh, and I kept moving down, down and down. When all else fails, ask dad.
and he, he told me you got to go to a hinge screw it's a very small wood screw a number four wood screw also called a hinge screw and uh, they have a tiny little head and uh, and it just digs right into that plastic no problem they're holding them well and the, and the glass slides good so that was uh I should have asked dad in the first place so the number four wood screw is was the key for uh, getting your the top on the top it doesn't matter so much but on the bottoms so your glass slides smoothly also i run a little bead of electrical tape on the bottom of my glass oh we'll show you that later um but it's it just so it's not your glass isn't on rubbing against metal and plastic that, that little that little rubber uh of a uh, little rubber coating of of, of uh, electrical tape really helps a smooth the smooth slide so we'll show you that um so anyways here's that's uh where we're at right now i'm going to go ahead and screw these pieces in and then we will just drop our top on and and we have an enclosure uh it's been a very simple build there's it's it's pretty straightforward um you can just do it to your custom dimensions and the extra material you can play around and do all kinds of great stuff with it it, it cleans so easy it's uh, i'll never build with anything ever again um besides the stuff so uh well i'm gonna go ahead and slap these things together and then we'll show you what what we got here at the end i i'm looking at um between uh, these, I got I built four of them. These pr same enclosures, and we're we're looking at a probably about nine hundred dollars total. I didn't keep a real close track, but definitely under a thousand dollars in in materials for these uh, for these four enclosures that are uh, what, four and almost four and a half feet by two feet by almost two feet tall, and uh, also I <laughs> I inc I have another included in that expense is enough material to build two little bearded dragon brooder which it's an idea i came up with never seen anything like it something after raising a bunch of babies last year um an idea i came up with that'll be another video but so uh that material was also included in this price so it's kind of two projects in one um super happy with how this has come out and and what we're the the end product is uh is amazing and can't wait to show you guys so let's get this finished okay we're at the final stages of our build um, it's been a lot of fun everything has come together really nice I'm excited about getting everyone into their new homes and uh, one of the last stages we got our glass from our, our local glass guy and uh, I'm gonna show you guys a little trick I've been using for a while I haven't seen anywhere else um, so you can go ahead and thank me in the comments below what we use here are uh, is command strips. Uh, they're, they're everywhere. You see at Home Depot, Walmart, anywhere. And these little these little hanger clips make perfect handles. They're clear. They're not intrusive. You don't see them too much, and they're great <laughs> to hold on to, as you can see. Uh, no, but uh, and they work really well. Um, the only thing is, unfortunately. You do have to follow the instructions. It, um, if you use a regular cleaner, they're not going to stay on as well. Any kind of Windex or something like that. I don't know why, but it doesn't work as well. You got to use alcohol. Clean your clean your surface uh, thoroughly. It's that's it's really important. Rubbing alcohol. I don't know why, but it's key that you do that. Um, otherwise, they just won't stay on as well. So that's the only real trick to this and uh, they make phenomenal little handles and uh, for sliding glass doors of, of any cages I like them better than most of the ones that I have that the handles that already came on the cages so all you do is I measure it out so get it approximately center you take off the black side first this is all in the instructions on the thing. I like to give it just the width of the tape measure an inch away, so then they're all consistent. It's an easy, easy measuring tool. And uh, you rub these down on there really good. They say 30 seconds, whatever. Um, but I think the, the, the key is using rubbing alcohol for cleaning. Um, but 
really are these make the greatest handles for your sliding glass enclosure with the sliding glass front enclosures take off the loose side go ahead and stick your little doodad on there Again, hold it down they say for 30 seconds press it hard and uh, you have a unobtrusive yet very functional handle and these uh, I mean the ones on there they've been on there over a year no problem um, every once in a while you'll have one pop off like if you slide the glass across and hit it it might pop them off so you restick it no problem these things peel right up restick them on with another one uh, it's it's a phenomenal little handle love them so yeah we went ahead we had our glass cut 7 16 of an inch smaller than our opening so they go ahead and fit into into our little tracks and uh, I'm excited to show you guys well the final product I only showed you uh, you know we were building one but this was actually I, I made four of them that are all pretty much identical uh, let's go take a look at them okay here we go so we went ahead and we made four of them all pretty much the same um, all, I, all we really did is alternate uh, the lights on each side uh, you know, so we have water on one side like heat on the other um, didn't want one side all being hot one side all being cool so hopefully this will keep things even um, everything's set up to to really give them a lot of thermal regulation they can get up and bask on this on the shelf up there get cooler down underneath it water bowl on the other side extra cool underneath that so we're going to go ahead and move this is going to be the new homes for our water cobras and then the boas on the bottom um, super excited uh, we went ahead and we added a second bulb for the boa since they like it a little warmer and they're going to be more planted so they got a plant line in there um, We'll go ahead and test all the temperatures once we get get them up and see if uh, if we need to add any and maybe a second fixture to these other ones but I kind of doubt it the best thing about this is it's so light I was able to move the whole stack out to add a, that extra bulb on the bottom without even taking these other ones off the top they're so light I could actually was able to stack these all myself with the exception of the top one I needed help so they're very manageable um, so finished product here we are very happy um, took about I don't know uh, about two weeks uh, just you know working a few hours here a few hours there and uh, under a thousand dollars so very very happy with it and uh, I think our snakes will be too so all right till next time people